This is Dance Studio 411, where we answer your real life questions about your toughest studio life predicaments parent problems, teacher turnover, student challenges, policy dilemmas, and so much more. Let's talk about what's keeping you awake at night and what you can do about it. Here are your hosts, Suzanne Blake Garrity and Jill Tyrone. Welcome to this episode of the Dance Studio 411 podcast. I'm Jill Tyrone, and today's episode is all about building an effective communication plan for your summer dance programs. My special guests are Megan Zebarth and Colleen Rubio of Resourceful Dance. Resourceful Dance has developed a proven system that helps dance studio owners consistently market their programs. Co-founders Megan and Colleen started Resourceful Dance because they needed this type of support when they owned a studio. As you'll hear today, Megan and Colleen are passionate about empowering women, building sustainable businesses, and destroying the myth that you have to do it all yourself. Megan and Colleen, welcome. I'm so excited to have you here today. But before we dive into all the amazing content you have, why don't you tell us a little bit more about you and Resourceful Dance? Well, thanks so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yes, thank you so much, Jill. We're really excited to dive in. Um, So I owned a dance studio for eight years and my husband is in the military. So we were faced with some moves. I had a couple children. Um, So I decided to sell my business. And the first summer I reached out to one of my college friends who needed some help with a website for her dance studio. And then that kind of snowballed into helping another dance studio owner with her Facebook. Um, And before we knew it, we had another business within three months of selling my previous business. So I can't help myself um, and I can't get out of the dance world. So we've just kept going and helping dance studio owners get it all done. That's great, Megan. So Colleen, do you have anything to add? Tell me a little bit about your role and how you uh, work with Megan. Yeah. So, uh, well, Megan and I, we were at the studio. I'm her sister. So we are kind of a tag team at our old studio. And as she started having babies, I also started having babies. So it was kind of like a tag team. Who's in charge? Who's taking over? Who's helping create this system for our studio so we can be with our kids, essentially? And after that, after Megan sold the studio, we kind of And we started working with a couple different people along the way. We kind of realized that there was a need for this help because we didn't have any. We had each other, thankfully. But outside of that, we didn't. And I know a lot of studio owners are one person shows, so they need all the extra help. And um, we realized that we could provide that um, with our marketing. That's wonderful. There definitely is a need. Our members are in um, in our Facebook group and they're often asking about how do I manage my website? How do I post on social media? What do I post? When do I post? So the need is definitely there. You recognized it and you are doing a smashing job of helping studio owners throughout this crazy time and path that they're on. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're focusing on summer programs um, and specifically communications around these programs, whether it be your camps, your classes, and intensives. So let's start with talking about your messaging and your strategy and planning and why that's so important. So this last year, it's been like crisis zone. Um, Every studio owner, every business owner, every person, let's be honest, has just been in this like constant state of stress. Things are changing rapidly. You have to make decisions on the fly. It's always changing. Things are getting canceled. You try again, that gets canceled too. It's been crazy. So now that we can kind of look forward and take a breath and we have a little bit more space and clarity of what the future is going to look like, we have time to be a little bit more strategic in what we're putting out into the world. And also parents are in a place where they see that too. So they're ready to get back to activities. They're ready to get their kids kind of in the mix of things again. So we want to make sure our message is super clear so that our studio is the one that they return to. Exactly. And I mean, something that Colleen and I are super passionate about, and I know Jill, you're passionate about it too, is the importance of planning. I didn't do nearly enough of this as a dance studio owner. And Like if you can take anything away today, Colleen and I want you to figure out how you can plan first and do later. Like that is like the secret magic sauce of 
being less stressed, being less overwhelmed, um, which it's really easy in your marketing between your website, your social, your Facebook, your Instagram, it's really easy to get overwhelmed. So if you can take some time to plan ahead of time, when you sit down to start actually taking action, it makes it so much easier. And don't feel bad if you've never worked like this, because this is something that's new to us in our business. And it's really when we started working with clients that we found like, oh, when we take a half an hour to plan, it makes the doing so much easier. I love that. Plan first, do later. That's a really great strategy. So let's expand on that. So when you're talking about planning, what specifically are you planning for? Yeah. So when we're talking about planning, um, like if we were to think about our summer programs, the first step is we're going to come up with our messaging for that program. And we have a small process and we really do this before any new promotion, before any school year. So we're going to talk about summer today, but really you could do this multiple times during the year at the start of a new year over and over again. So the first thing we do is we do a brainstorm and we just start with the problems that parents and our families are having right now. Pre-pandemic, the problems for parents at a dance studio maybe weren't as obvious, like, oh, I need a dance class or my kid needs an activity. But now they're really obvious. You know, there's lots of problems that parents are dealing with, whether that's childcare or needing to help their child just integrate back into activities or helping their child deal with stress. So there are real problems that dance parents are dealing with, which I won't say that's an opportunity, but it makes it a little bit easier to speak to those problems. When we sit down to do our planning and we start with this communication plan, the pitfall that a lot of businesses make is that they're going to start from a place of talking about their se- themselves. So talking about them teacher, their teachers, talking about their programs, talking about their space. Instead, we want to think about the parent and what they're experiencing and what our program can bring to the table for them. So it's kind of a shift in mindset, um, but it's a really important one to kind of think about before you're starting to promote your programs. So what you're doing is you're looking at the pain points that the parents are experiencing, and that's your target audience. So where you want to hit them where they are, essentially. So if they're in the middle of being a little upside down and backwards, as we've all been for this last year, how can we take some of that stress and and relieve that and make it so that they have an opportunity to come to you at your studio? Exactly. So, yep, we're just writing down all those pain points, just a brainstorm to start. And then the second part of this is we think about you know, how can our summer programs match up with those pain points and kind of solve those problems? So maybe you're going to offer before and after camp care this year, you know, or, you know, you can get really specific and just think about what you already have planned and how it pairs up nicely with the different pain points that you've identified as a solution. And then the final step of this brainstorm is thinking about what it looks like when parents enroll their children in a camp. So, You sign your child up for camp and now they are more confident. Now they are ready to tackle their school year schedule. So what does that look like? And again, we're not talking at all about the features of your camps. We're not talking about themes yet. You know, we're not into the nitty gritty. We're really focused on like the emotional impact of what you're offering and what that outcome, because we, I mean, we always laugh that no one cares about your Marley. Like we always say that to each other because dance studio owners, they always want to like speak to the features of their space and their studio, but Mm -hmm. parents want to see happy kids, you know? And I think ultimately that's what most parents really care about at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, sprung floors are great. Awesome mirrors, all the technology in the world that builds your studio. Those are extremely important. And the studio owners are very proud of that. And it's it's an investment for sure. But there's really no price tag on the emotional welfare of those children and seeing that's exactly right. They want to see their happy children. So we talked about brainstorming, reaching those parents where they are and and targeting in and honing in on those pain points. When you have this brainstorm and you start to break it down, um, are you talking about then communicating that plan next? So this is step one. This planning process is quite extensive, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So first off, we did kind of brainstorm the problem, the solution, and then what it's going to look like. Um, Then you need to formulate 
a little tagline, a one-liner of what that program is. So we're going to take out all the flowery language. It's going to be super black and white. We don't want our parents to have to think about what it means. So you don't want to name your, you don't want your tagline to be something like twirling tutus on a cloud because parents don't know what that is if they've never seen your programs before. So we want to call it themed summer dance camps for kids ages two to five or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, So parents don't have to think about it. They've already done a lot of work throughout this pandemic. They don't need to put the work in to figure out what you're offering and then do a value proposition. So Megan can kind of walk you through what that value proposition is. Yeah. So a value proposition is just how are you going to talk about your programs in a way that makes parents care and invested in what you're doing? So we have our one-liner, and I want to say, too, we love a good themed camp. I mean, so many dance studio owners are so creative, and I don't want to downplay that, but we're kind of talking about top-level communication. Um, So we feel that sort of those that, you know, the specific ways you talk about your programs that are maybe unique to your dance studio, those maybe are great for internal communication after someone enrolls on your website in the descriptions. But when you just have a sentence to capture someone's attention, you don't want to make parents work that hard. So I wanted to throw that out. We love a good theme. We appreciate the creativity. We're just talking (laughs) the first line of communication. Good way to differentiate that. Absolutely. Yeah. I just didn't want anyone to get worried. (laughs) Don't be offended. (laughs) Yeah, I know. We we love cute, creative things. So the Value proposition, we're just, we're leading with the problem. So we're starting with the problem. We present how our camps, our programs are the solution. And then we paint the picture of what that looks like. So kind of working off of our camp example, we understand that parents are looking for ways to help their child safely ease back into extracurriculars. Our summer camps provide kids ages two to 18 with three hours of themed activities, creative choreography, and lots of opportunity for connection. Our campers will emerge with more confidence, independence, and passion for dance. So the goal is that a parent would read that and think like, they get me. They understand what I'm dealing with, what I'm trying to do for my child. And that sounds amazing. I want in. That's very click worthy. They're going to want to definitely either, you know, click through to your website, wherever it may be, they're, that they're, they're going to want to take action on that description for sure. Yeah. So we kind of do this for, I mean, every promotional thing we're running within our own business. And then, you know, with our clients too, is just taking the time to kind of come up with this short paragraph that makes people want, they want it. So after that, once we have that formed, it's good to go. And the point of this is to make sure that everywhere we put our summer camp information is consistent with this value proposition. So taking that time to write it will make everything so much more clear. And it's going to save you so much time when you sit down to schedule the email, write the Facebook post, because you already know what you're talking about. So we take that value proposition and we put it anywhere that people who are executing our marketing can see. So maybe that's a notebook at your front desk. Maybe that if you're using a project management system, like Trello is what we use. Um, Maybe it's right at the top on a big card. We also like to print it out and put a few bullet points and speaking points and give it to our teachers. So they know how to talk to our summer camp, talk to our parents about our summer camps. Um, We kind of put it in all the places so that when we sit down to do the scheduling of the marketing, everybody's on the same page. Excellent. I like how you added in, Colleen, about bringing your teachers and any of the people who are are involved in these programs. If your messaging is crystal clear, then they will have that crystal clear idea of what they're trying to speak to when they have to communicate, whether it be with a parent or even a student. So I think that's really valuable. The time that you take to plan ahead, it will actually even benefit you in the long run with your faculty and staff. Yeah, we're big proponents of this planning, although it feels like extra work. And I know everyone's like, I don't have time for this, but it's going to save you time when you actually go to do the thing and when you're talking to your teachers. And also, last thing I want to mention, repetition is your friend when it comes to marketing. So the more you can hammer home these this message of like, hey, we're solving this problem. This is what it's going to look like when your kids take our summer program the better. We want our parents to hear that same information over and over and over and over. (laughs) 
Okay, so we've talked about the messaging. We've talked about um, you know putting putting some time into planning. And is it now time to execute this plan? Yeah. So we've done that value prop, and now we're going to get into okay. Like Colleen mentioned, one of the first things that we recommend to all of our clients is creating that script of bullet points based on this value proposition for our teachers. Um, I think that is marketing that is really like, not everybody does this. Um, I've taught at a lot of studios. I have not had a lot of studio owners hand me a piece of paper with, hey, can you mention these things in class? Can you pop out of your lobby, out of your classroom? And I realize some of these things are difficult to do right now. Um, You may not have those opportunities to interact with parents, but you can definitely mention to your kids, we're enrolling for summer camps and here's why you know, you should consider telling your parents that it's time to sign up. Colleen and I both are active teachers and we do this because we have our dance studio owner hats on too, and we understand, but it's not natural to all teachers to make small talk with parents. That's very true. Um, They're not as invested maybe at the get-go that you may be as the studio owner. So it's your job to make sure that they understand fully what's happening and then they'll be your best salesman, really. Exactly. It's the best sales and easiest sales you could make are with your already customers. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a huge opportunity. The next place that we would take this value proposition and all that good stuff is to our Facebook page and any emails that you're going to write. Generally speaking, we recommend at least like one email a week from your studio. So that's kind of just a goal that you can keep in mind. And then also your website. Don't forget to include a one-liner. You don't even have to include your entire value proposition in everything. We like to take one line here, put it in a social media post, put your main main idea into your website. So you can kind of sprinkle it. It doesn't have to be the entire thing. We kind of look at this value prop as like an improv. Um, I know we have all dancers listening. Like when you have confines and rules, it, it allows you to be even more creative within that. So that's how we kind of look at this. Like this provides the roadmap and then you can get creative in how you demonstrate each one of these points or each one of these bullets, but it just gives you a direction. And I mean, like we said in the beginning, when you have a direction, everything gets easier. Amazing. So why don't we go back to what you started to talk about, Colleen, and that's the social media outlets. So specifically Facebook and then any other tips and tricks that you have when you're taking your value of proposition, um, you know, to the airwaves and how, how do you go about posting and getting the message out on the social media outlets? So the first thing that I would recommend is making sure that you're not posting on Facebook one post here, one post there. Um, You have to be consistent. So whatever you can find like that is reasonable to you, maybe it's once a week and that's all you can manage. Okay, fine. Stick with it. Um, We recommend like three times a week, three to five is a good benchmark. So if you want to start at that three times a week, that will be able to like get you some followers, get you some engagement. Um, People can start looking to your page uh, as a roadmap to what's going on at your studio. It's a community. That's what we want on our Facebook page. If you're inconsistent, people won't turn there um, because they won't know if you've posted anything. So it's kind of, you kind of have to train your audience to look there in the first place. Um, And then make sure that you're scheduling all at one time. So you're not just, Oh, Oh no, it's 10 o'clock. And I forgot uh, (laughs) to schedule a post. You're going to schedule them all at once. And Facebook has a scheduler. You don't need a outside software to use. You can just use the Facebook scheduler. It's really easy. It's great. We use it. We do a whole month at a time. So that's called batching. So that's going to save you time. Again, we're big time savers. I love the idea of batching for sure. Yeah. And when we're trying to think about, you know, this messaging and how we're incorporating this, we usually recommend with your posting schedule that one promotional post a week, one post that is sort of positioning you as a community member or an expert. So that's maybe sharing videos, sharing other local businesses, just taking the spotlight off of your own. And sort of that's a great way to kind of broaden your audience as well, if you're tagging businesses or other organizations. And then one post that's really showing parents what is it like to dance at your studio. So that could be videos, photos, and you're really putting that in context so people can start to look at that and think, oh, that looks like something my child would enjoy. 
So with those promotional posts, we're just picking one of the things that we've kind of pulled from our value proposition and just theming that post. So how can we talk about the problem? Is there a testimonial that really shows the end result that we're promising parents? Um, So we kind of try to just find all sort of creative spins that all come back to that same message. And I think too, when you're doing your promotional post, you're gonna include that link to your website to register. So it's a call to action in your supplemental posts where you're not asking for registration, you can still demonstrate your values from that statement. So if you're really going to hone in on the community aspect and the socialization, you're going to show pictures of kids having fun and laughing at each other or a video of kids giggling together. Mm -hmm. Um, That's going to demonstrate those values without saying, hey, always buy, 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 buy. So parents can get that same idea and that confirmation that this this is what that program's about without getting that super salesy post. Can I ask a very quick question? I'm going to put you on the spot here, but for those studio owners who are listening, who are maybe just getting started or they haven't run summer programs in the past, what what can you recommend for them if they don't have some videos or they don't have a lot of pictures of in-studio, especially right now during the COVID uh, times that we have? Do you have any recommendations for either artwork or getting the messaging out without having the actual in-studio pictures? Yeah, you know, I have, um, I ran some summer programs just at my community center a couple summers ago, and I didn't have any following. I'm not from that area. And something that you can do is I hosted some free, like open house events. And I was very transparent at the beginning of saying, I would like to get some photos of dancers enjoying themselves in class. So it was just right off the bat, I said, I'm going to be taking pictures at these free events. And I got everyone's permission. And I gave them copies of all the photos. And that was like a one hour event. Um, I realized that things may be a little hard. That might be a little bit more difficult because you probably would have to ask people to drop off their kids and not have parents there. But people love to get pictures of their children. So I had people just like begging me to let them come to this free dance class. Um, And that was a great way to just bring my camera in one hour and get a lot of photos. Also just... Even if you don't have a studio um, or you don't have a clientele, maybe you have friends with children. You know, maybe you could host a little demo class or, you know, I think those are all ways you can get creative. And I want to add one thing if possible. Um, Of course. So it doesn't have to be perfect either. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, especially it's a community. It's not. Um, It's not your branded photos that get shared and that get liked. It's your real life in the studio some blurry pictures maybe in the background, that's fine. Um, If this is your first year and you haven't had a summer session yet, just take pictures of the kids that the age of kids that will be in those summer classes. So it doesn't have to be like, oh, this is from summer. It could just be a normal class. So just take a few pictures with your phone and that's all you need. It's really, I would capture smiley faces is the most important thing. I agree. I love that. Thank you for mentioning. Uh, it's super low cost ideas that you can do right from your your phone, your iPhone or Android phone, whatever you have. The cameras are great now. So mm-hmm. utilize what you do have. Excellent. Um, going back to and talking about Facebook, do you have anything else to add or how about sharing on other platforms as well? Yeah. So we get this question a lot too. Um, everyone wants to be on Instagram, you know, and that is like the hot spot right now. But what's interesting is that Colleen and I actually, we've gone back and forth between ourselves posting on Instagram, stopping, because when we really tracked our analytics, Instagram was sending two people every single month to our website, where our Facebook account sends hundreds and hundreds of people to our website. So, and we are kind of seeing that with our clients as well, like their students are on Instagram but the parents aren't really heading to your website and making purchasing decisions from Instagram as much as they are right now from Facebook. So I would say, take a look at your website analytics where you can see how much traffic is coming from Instagram. But I would say if you had to pick one platform right now, I think Facebook is still where it's at for actually driving traffic to your website. If you feel like you've mastered Facebook and you're ready to take on something else, go for it. Um, 
we're just not seeing with our own clients. I'm curious if you have seen other things too. We're just not seeing people really get new students from Instagram. Yeah. And it's a tough sell, right? Because it's not necessarily like you're going to buy a product. So it's super easy to go from, you know, a a post on social media and then go purchase the product and have it delivered into your house. You're talking about a service, signing up for a camp, trusting, you know, somebody with your child for a while during, during the day, that process. And going back to what you talked about early on and creating this whole plan and being very consistent, that's what is this is all about, right? Consistency. They get to see you time and time again, and they get to, to see the branding that you're creating. So great. Um, as we start to wrap up, I'd love for you guys to finish up. What else do you have to add and give some extra tips to our listeners today? So I think just staying consistent with your marketing and putting it on the calendar to have this planning meeting will make a huge difference. So if you have a team member that is going to help you execute this, or maybe a teacher that wants some more responsibility, get a buddy and then put it on the calendar and hold each other accountable because your marketing is something, it's not the day-to-day operations. It doesn't always feel super urgent and you can push it off. But marketing, the more consistent you are with it, the more it works. So you can't just expect to do your marketing one or two months out of the year and have huge success. It's a constant effort throughout the year. So you have to make it a priority and you have to actually sit down to plan it to be successful. Yeah, and kind of piggybacking off piggybacking off of what Colleen said um, with the planning I think dance studio owners, I mean, we hear this all the time, like no one reads my emails. I sent this out. No one enrolled. That's very true. No one is paying as much attention to your things as you are, but it just means that we have to get smarter and embrace the repetition. So I think too, sometimes studio owners feel like if they say something once, um, that should be enough. And that's just not how it is right now. So you know, even the Facebook post and the emails, it's like you can send that same information out many times before you're going to get pushback from people like, oh, that's too much. Um, so if anything, err on the side of repeating, 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 and I think you'll be fine. Most studio owners aren't doing nearly enough selling and asking. So you have a long way to go before you're really going to annoy your dance parents. I agree 100%. Talking about the consistency, the planning, you ladies definitely speak my language. I'm all about batching my tasks and creating time and space and putting things in my calendar. So I cannot tell you how grateful I am for your time and talent today and really sharing awesome tips and strategies with our listeners. I know I can I can see everybody taking notes right now and doing their planning for marketing their summer programs. Um, I would like to just close by saying, I learned a lot today. I know our listeners are learning a lot today. So why don't you share how they can reach out to you? I'm sure you um, would love to hear from them if they have any comments or questions. So please share some contact information so our listeners can reach out. Yeah. So the best place to reach us would be on our website. So it's just www.resourcefuldance.com. And then our emails are just Megan at resourcefuldance.com and Colleen at resourcefuldance.com. So we're very easy to find on the internet. So anywhere you go, you can get in touch with us. Excellent. And as I post the the replay of this and we, we go live with this episode, I will have all of these notes and your contact information in there as well. So Colleen and Megan, thank you so much for your time and talent and expertise. Like I said, you speak my language. It's been a joy to speak with you. And I look forward to sharing all your information with our listeners. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to this episode of Dance Studio 411. Visit us online at dancestudio411.com for more great resources and to submit a question for a future episode. Our number one goal is to help you build a successful dance studio business and keep your passion for dance alive.